Yo, Adam Saxon with Guy in a Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can install Power BI Desktop and what to do after to make sure that you're set up for success, creating beautiful reports and using all those amazing features. Before we get into it, be sure to give me a big thumbs up on the video and hit the subscribe button to see more videos from both Patrick and myself. And enough of all this talking, you know we like to do it here on Guy in a Cube. Let's do what? Let's head over to my machine. The number one thing I'm going to recommend to you is to install this using the Microsoft Store. This is good if you're on Windows 10 or later. And what you want to do is just search for Power BI. You'll see Power BI Desktop here and just hit the Get button and it will go and download and install it for you. The reason for doing this is because if you do it from the Microsoft Store, you'll automatically get the updates installed every month. The Power BI Desktop releases monthly except for January. So 11 times a year, it'll just automatically get installed and you'll have the latest and greatest. No muss, no fuss. Your other option is to head over to powerbi.microsoft.com, which will take you to the marketing page, at which point you can go up to products, Power BI, desktop. From here, you can either just download free. That'll actually take you over to the Microsoft Store. The other option you can do to manually download it is to go to see download options. This will take you to the Microsoft download page, at which point you'll see both the 32-bit version and the 64-bit version available for you, and you can download those accordingly, and then go ahead and install it. If you go this route of manually downloading the MSI file, you have to do this yourself every month. So it's not gonna be automatically updated. Or your organization may prevent you from doing Microsoft Store and they may have a deployment option for you. Nothing I can do about that. The other thing, 32-bit, 64-bit, almost everything is 64-bit nowadays. I don't know why you would get 32-bit. I would default to 64-bit if you're not sure. Worst that'll happen is it won't work. You can uninstall it and then download the 32-bit version. You might be wondering about system requirements. So I did a video a while back talking about how much resource Resources you need to run Power BI Desktop or what I think you should have to, to go and do this. I talk about what my current laptop is and I go through all of those things. And even though it's a couple of years old now, it still holds true. So go check that video out. If you're curious about what you should have on your machine, pro tip, if you only have eight gig of RAM on your machine, uh, you're probably going to need more. Go ask for a new machine. All right, after Power BI Desktop's installed, you can just go to Start and search for it. There may You may have an icon on your desktop also. So let's go ahead and start it up. And if you're coming in the very first time, it's gonna ask you to sign in. I highly recommend that there are some capabilities inside of Power BI Desktop that only work if you're signed in. So make sure you're doing that to get all of the goodies inside of Power BI Desktop. And then you will see this fabric green welcome screen. You can choose to turn that off if you want, and then go ahead and either start getting data and start working with Power BI Desktop. That's it, right? Not so fast. There's one more thing I want you to do after you've signed into Power BI Desktop. You may explore around and you may start questioning, well, where are some of the things I've heard about? The new card visual, some of the co-pilot capabilities, or that beautiful shape map I keep hearing about all the time from those guys in a cube. Let me show you. There are some other features that aren't on by default. So let's go to option and settings. We'll go to options and then come down to preview features. There are a bunch of preview features inside of Power BI Desktop. So these are not generally available, which means inside of Power BI Desktop, they are not on by default. And so if you want to leverage these, you've got to go through and put a check in the box. One thing I do every time I get an update is I come in here and look, see if there's any new check boxes. And I personally just check them all. You'll see there's some co-pilot items in here. Here, there's Power BI project stuff if you want to leverage source control or Git operations. Also with the Timdle format, on object interactions, which we've done a bunch of videos on. Lots of cool stuff here. If you're wondering where it is and why you don't see it, go check the preview thing first and see if it's there as a preview feature. All right, so let's go ahead and hit OK. And it's going to require a restart for it to take effect. That's OK. We'll close it, open it back up. And now you'll see this new home screen because that's one of the preview features I selected, right? So I can just hit blank report and then bam, I'm in inside of Power BI Desktop. And now I see my on object editing. I've got Copilot up here. I've got all the things to be successful with Power BI. Now you've got what you need. Go ahead and install Power BI Desktop. Start creating those amazing reports and let us know what you think. If you have any other tips or tricks of when you went to install Power BI Desktop, maybe something you did the first time, go ahead and drop it in the comments below. I'd love to hear it. As always, thank you so much for watching. Keep being awesome. And we'll see you in the next video.